Oh. Hello YouTube, Sentinel H here for episode 14 of my Reactor Craft tutorial series. We got quite a, a hefty episode today. Um, last time we took a look at the, how to build the high pressure turbine, which was the multi-block turbine. Now we're going to take a look at how to build the turbine generator, which is a multi-block RF generator that you can attach directly to the back of either the standard sized uh, turbine or the high pressure turbine. Um, both of them are compatible and it lets you turn the entire output straight into RF without having to worry about the uh, torque limits on a bunch of rotational dynamos. But it's pretty involved. It's really a large investment. Um, anyway, so let's take a look at how to make the blocks. Um, so the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to make a lot of this gold wiring. This is not a block, but this is a crafting component for both the housing and the uh, wiring. Okay, so to make gold wiring, it's very simple. Just three gold ingots in a diagonal in a standard crafting station gives you two gold wiring. You're going to need an awful lot of this stuff. Okay? So we're going to make uh, generator housings. This is one of the blocks that you need for the entire thing. The whole thing is encased in these housings. And they are crafted with six steel ingots and three of the gold wiring. That gets you one generator housing. And to build this thing, you're going to need 135 generator housing. You know, so you're going to need like over 400, just over 400 gold wiring. And, a, you, know, and you know, an awful lot of steel. 135 generator housing. I told you it was an investment. Okay, then we're going to make steam bypass. This is simply one steel ingot and four black wool. The cheapest part of this entire thing. Um, just make sure you only put four black wool on. If you surround an ingot with black wool, you'll get something else. You'll get thermal insulation, which is not what we need. We need steam bypass. And you're only going to need 17 of those. Next, we're going to need the generator rotor core, which is crafted with four steel ingots and five shaft unit. And you're going to need nine of them. And then generator wiring, which is going to require one steel ingot and eight of that gold wiring. And you're going to need 56 of these. So yeah, like I said, you're going to need an absolute ton of this gold wiring. So once you have all of that, you all, then you need to craft the turbine generator block itself, which is crafted with four redstone, four gold wiring, and a magnetic core, which we haven't actually looked at yet. So how on earth do we make a magnetic core? Well, the way that we do that is with eight of these ferromagnetic plates. And to make ferromagnetic plates, we need three ferromagnetic ingots arranged in a three line, just like uh, we do with base panels in a crafting station. So how do we make ferromagnetic ingots? Well, in order to get your hands on those, at least in 1.6.5 version uh, 25Z, it might have changed in 1.7, but I'm pretty sure you still need to do it this way. You need to go into your blast. You need to get a blast furnace, and you need to put in your blast furnace one steel ingot, one iron ingot, and one lodestone. Then you have to heat it to 1,200 degrees. So I got a friction heater, and I am giving it 4,096 radians per second and 384 newton meters. That is what I have discovered to be the uh, to to get me there. So we're up to 1,200, and we are currently cooking. And now we will get our ferromagnetic ingots, and you're going to need three of these to make three plates. You know, so basically you're going to need to make the recipe three times, but I'll give you nine uh, uh, plates, and you only need eight of them, so you have one left over. So anyway, we now know how to make everything that we're going to need. So now let's talk about the building of it, because it is a multi-block structure. Now we have our high-pressure turbine from before. Now I'm honestly not sure which way is easier. Of building this thing, whether it's easier to build this thing first or the turbine uh, first. Either way, you're going to have to break blocks on the turbine uh, in order to um, finish it. So it might be easier to build a turbine house, uh, the turbine uh, itself first, and then plonk this on the back. So let's take a look at how to craft it. This is a five by, I believe, five by five by ten long uh, multi-block. And I've got a block of diamond here for a reason. The The reason that this is hard to build, uh, a little bit hard to build, is that you have to, the last block of the structure that you have to place is actually the block that goes right here. Um, so as you can imagine, once you've built up the whole thing, you can't reach this block. 
uh, you'll have to break parts of the turbine to get up there. So I'm just denoting that with a diamond block for now because we can't place that block yet. Well, we could, but we have to place this block last, otherwise it won't form the multi-block. Um, so to form the multi-block, um, we are going to grab our generator housing. This is the center layer, and then we got another layer down here, and then this is the bottom layer. This thing is five blocks wide. So we're going to place one, two, three, four, and five blocks of generator housing along a line like that. See where the center is? Down two, along like that. Do that again. And now we are going to put it three wide, and we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blocks out to make our ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then fill in, make this bit three wide. So this is the shape that we want, okay, for the bottom layer. Now we're going to be making the second layer. So again, we take our housing, and we go like so and like so but in here we're not using housing we're actually using steam bypass okay so that's two layers thick three wide so that's six steam bypass on this second layer this goes just below our center block yep that's correct and then we need to take our gen uh, generator rotor wiring and we just need to cover up this housing that we placed before. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight layers, uh, eight you know l rows of wire. Then we take our housing again, and we just wrap it around the wire. There we go. Wait a second. I made that too long. Yep. Good thing I noticed. Don't make it too long. That's what we want. We want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows of wiring and then end it off with uh, another row of housing. Alright? Then we move on to the center layer, which is housing, bypass. Leave this block for now because this has to be the last block you place, but it's going to be rotated. Bypass and housing. Then we're going to take some more steam bypass. We're going to place it here. We're going to place it here. Now we're going to take our uh, generator rotor cores and run them this way down the center, just like that, on top of the wiring. Then we're going to place more wiring on either side of that rotor. We're going to place generator housing around it while leaving a block of it open in the center. That's where the turbine generator block is going to go. Now, I don't know for sure if I can place it now or if I have to wait for later, but uh, I do know that you have to place this block before you place the final rotor block. I was watching someone's uh, tutorial video and for some reason the turbine generator block was turning into a... Um, I'm imagining it's a much older version. It was turning into a different machine if you did it the opposite direction, uh, the opposite way, which was kind of strange. I'm assuming it will not happen anymore. I'm going to place that there. It looks like that with the, the cross. That's where it goes, right in the center. And then we just repeat the uh, two layers that we did before. So, generator housing, bypass, 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 housing, and wiring. This is the same as layer 2 that we did before. And of course, we then surround it with housing. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Just like that. And then we go back to the first layer that we did, which was housing, 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 housing. Except there is one difference. Instead of placing a block of housing right here, I'm going to instead place a steam bypass. Alright, that is the difference. And now we just cover the wiring and housing. Go all the way to the end, three blocks wide. So we end up with that shape on the front, 
we end up with that shape on the top. Don't forget this bit of steam bypass. If you do forget this bit of steam bypass, you may be wondering later, sitting there wondering why your multi-block isn't forming. Alright? So just remember, on the bottom layer, it's all housing. But on the top, there is one piece of steam bypass. Now, we have to get our last rotocore block in place. So the way to do that, we're just going to break some blocks on our turbine until we get to... Yeah, we got to break that too. Until we get to this. And then when we place this block, you can see that it just formed. See how it looks different? If we come out here, we can see that it looks pretty darn awesome. Now we need to finish our, well we need to repair our turbine that we had to damage. So place that, make sure you're looking at the other one when you place it. Grab some turbine blades, place them like a so. Some turbine housing. And Rick has said make sure you're looking in the right direction when you do this. Always. Okay. Oh, whoop. this has to be turbine blades. There we go. So now we have our hybrid turbine reformed. It is connected to this turbine generator. And I've honestly never used this thing. Um, so I. I want to see if I can just plug this directly onto the end of this thing. Alright, so let's grab some steam line. Reconnect our uh, react generator here. Let it spool up. And yep, there we go. We are getting power, so you can plug it straight into an energy cube if you want. This is going to run down pretty soon because I don't have it in debug mode. Um, but we can see that it's currently outputting 10,000 RF per tick. This thing hasn't spooled up to where it needs to be. Uh, let's just go ahead and do put it in debug mode so that it will have infinite uh, steam. We'll grab our angular transducer, whack it. See, it's it's still coming up to speed. It's going to take a while for it to get up to speed. In the meantime, this thing is happily churning out power. We can whack this so you can see how much it's actually producing. It's producing over a million RF per tick. So, slapping a resident energy cell on the end of it, not a good idea. Because this thing can only take in 10,000 RF per tick. While this thing is outputting, like, millions. Thankfully, um, ReactCraft I, don't know, I think it's part of Electrocraft where Reika added a uh, an infinite capacity RF cable. Might want to use that because this is a lot of RF per tick, and this is not going to cut it for getting the power out of it. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at that and let's see if we uh, if we have that here. Where is Electrocraft? I don't know what its icon looks like. Get fonts. Filter the dust and the And do do do. Pretty sure RF transfer cable. So let's trip. I don't know how this stuff works. If I'm quite honest. Let's see here. One million redstone flux per tick. This is producing one and a half million. See, I really don't know how this uh, this here cable works. Oh, 
works in the Um But let's grab a, another resonant energy cell and we'll see what happens if we slap it on here. Yeah, it's getting power. So that's probably a pretty good idea to use that stuff. Just make sure that you have enough. Uh, oops. Yeah, and that's you have to be careful of that as well. If you accidentally place a, a gener uh, one of these generator blocks next to your completed multi block, it will screw up the multi block. So don't let that happen to you. Anyway, I hope you uh, enjoyed the tutorial. Um, it, it, it's, it can be pretty daunting to build. It's a complicated multi-block and it does take an awful lot of resources. But you can't really argue with one and a half million RF per tick. Now, that's on a fully powered high pressure turbine. You're not going to get as much if you plug it into a uh, standard turbine, but it's, it might still be a, a, a valuable um, thing to do if you just can't get that power out of it in a usable form. This will the turbine generator will allow will turn that into RF for you without any power being wasted. So I hope you enjoyed the episode. Stay tuned for future episodes. I'm Sentinel H and I'm signing out.